So while spending time in Cornwall, I decided I wanted to see Land's End and go end to end in England. I thoroughly enjoy driving through Cornwall. The winding roads that go up and down hills are a blast to drive on. But it was time to leave these great country roads and set my GPS to Land's End. It was suggested for me to go here while I was having a few beers in the King Arthur's Arms in Cornwall. Now Land's End is basically just a landmark of the most westerly point of the English mainland. For me there really wasn't much of interest here. It was simply a destination I had to reach. Right here is the most westerly point in England. In that direction is the States. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a light. Some nice looking cliffs, but it really is just like I was told. You just come here to say that you've been here. So there we are. The drive here from Cornwall was about two hours. Now, not only do I have to drive back, but I have much further to go to reach Castle Coombe, totaling about six hours of bad weather driving just to spend 15 minutes at Land's End. It was well worth it. I wanted this trip to be complete and done proper. And the only way to do that was to make this grueling drive across the whole western peninsula of England. By the time I finally reached the Cotswolds area, I just decided to pull alongside the road and sleep in the car. It was raining and a little rough, but I slept very good in the end. Now the Cotswolds is an area of England about 786 square miles that runs through several different counties. There are several things that draw people to visit this area. The amazingly well-preserved villages, the rolling hills, the peace and quiet of the countryside, and of course the distinct yellow Cotswolds limestone used for building. The combination of these things makes everywhere you go in the Cotswolds a fairy tale-like experience. The Jurassic limestone quarried here defines what is considered the Cotswolds. It is also very rural and the entire population of the region is only around 84,000. I've heard it said that tradition is the preservation of fire and not the worship of ashes. This is very true of the Cotswolds. Very strict building codes keep the modern world and its building materials out. Even repairs must be done by a strict code using only original building materials. I strolled into Castle Coombe early. It was nice because I was able to beat the crowds, and there was not many people out yet, and I had the streets virtually to myself. Castle Coombe itself is a very standout town even for the Cotswolds. If it looks somewhat familiar to you, you may have already seen it in the movie War Horse. As amazing as it is to finally be here, I haven't eaten a bite since Cornwall, and my mind is only on one thing. So I walked into the first bar I seen and got myself some brunch, and of course, sampled the draft beer for a good while, before walking back out into the town with just a little bit of a beer buzz. One of the first things I wanted to explore, besides the local pub, was the church. Originally founded in the 13th century, the building has been extended over a long period of time. The nave was added in the 14th century, and the tower was completed in the 16th century. Finally, in the 1850s, much of the church fell into disrepair, and it had to be completely rebuilt. But don't let this reconstruction fool you. Just as in the rest of the Cotswolds, the reconstruction was done very thoughtfully with the preservation of tradition, and the church has lost none of its original character, and the surrounding cemetery is very beautiful. I find it very strange that one side of the cemetery is meticulously kept, while the other side is not even kept at all. I guess most people just don't walk around the back. The inside of this church is amazing. It looks much bigger from the inside than it does in the out, but I didn't stay in there long as I feel a little guilty from having my beer buzz in church. The story of Castle Coombe revolves around fabrics. In the Middle Ages, the booming wool trade gave rise to the town, and it was a very wealthy market area. In the industrial era, the rise of cotton and the fall of wool as the world's fabric was the town's downfall, but also its savior. The town and the surrounding farms having lost their economic significance, left little money behind to build anything new and kept the industries out. So had it not happened in this way, the town today may look very different. The economic boom of the Middle Ages, followed by the collapse of the industrial era, made the town what it is today. 
a bustling place to visit where people come to escape industry and walk on the English streets of days gone by. I spent a little more time in some of the pubs and walking around without the camera before calling it a day. It's always difficult moving on from a place like this, but as a traveler, it's your only option. An interesting note is that this classic stop sign was the only of its type that I seen on the whole trip, and I just wonder why. Driving on the A429, just past Fossbridge, I came across this massive estate surrounded by a very impressive wall. Keep in mind as I'm driving, I only started filming this after I noticed how massive it was. Just imagine the cost and labor, time, hands, and craftsmanship that was needed to put that wall up back in its time. You know every one of these stones is individually laid by hand to fit perfectly. Driving through the Cotswolds is quite an experience. The narrow winding country roads that weave through farmlands and rolling hills make for idyllic scenic pictures around every corner. I found myself stopping and just hanging out alongside the road more than I did driving. And with scenery like this, who could blame me? On the drive, I found some signs that said Hales Church with the English heritage symbol. I decided to follow and check it out. This was a great discovery for me. This church is very old and dates to the Catholic period in England. Built in 1175, the church's interior has many surviving medieval paintings all along the walls. The silence of the Cotswolds and being in this old church by myself had me feeling a little leery. And when I closed the door behind me, I couldn't help but feel I was being watched. My day in the Cotswolds ended at around dusk in the town of Stanton. What makes Stanton stand out to me so much was almost the entire village was built using the classic Cotswolds yellow limestone. The town seemed completely deserted and all I did was walk around and admire the homes and gardens. The town was so quiet and completely at peace. Everybody was just inside relaxing, it seemed. Even the sounds of my footsteps exploring the town sounded like noise pollution and very loud, like I might wake somebody up. The quiet, lonely atmosphere put me in a very reflective mood. And I just decided to sit here for a while at this cross and take in my surroundings and reflect on my journey thus far. Sometimes traveling alone thousands of miles overseas can be a bit rough and even a bit lonely, but I don't think I'll ever lose my desire to do it. The freedom of exploration and the wonder of discovery and learning of new things is something I think would be cheapened in a group.
I was starting to feel the chill of autumn coming in as the sun started to go down, and for some reason, everyone I did see in this town was on horseback. My time in the Cotswolds is coming to an end, and I have to move my journey forward. I ended up at the Mount Inn, which is in a beautiful location overlooking the town. Inside the mount, I had a really great meal, and I also met the owner of the old station house bed and breakfast a few towns over, and had one of the best conversations of my entire trip. I definitely had a few too many of those Downington Ales for the drive, but it was time for me to leave England, so I set my sights on Wales. Thanks for watching.